But what you're actually looking at is a pure machine built to test the exact interactions with this game's most confusing and least intuitive system. And that's everything that pertains to overpower. This finicky little stat in this game, oddly enough, has been the hardest to test thing that I've ever looked into in any Diablo game ever. But what I'm happy to report for you right now is an exhaustive list of literally every single stat the Necromancer has and whether or not it boosts overpower. And I'm not even going to hold it from you. You don't even have to watch the entire video. Now, I am going to go over how I tested this, the different things so you have to look out and break down some specifics. But if you just go to this Google Doc sheet, which is shared below, you can go ahead and take it and copy it. I'll include this video link here for reference later. I also just include a couple links to myself because, hey, you know, never stop self-promoing. But here are the results from every single stat that the Necromancer can get in this game and whether or not it specifically works with overpower. I list them by what type they are, so whether or not they are malignant heart for season one, whether or not it's something in your skill tree, just a stat that you can get in the game specifically relating to the Book of the Dead, whether or not it's an aspect in the game, whether or not it's an item that isn't a heart, so these are like penitent greaves or even elixirs that you can drink, or if it's a Paragon node, a Glyph bonus, etc. I show you the damage numbers that we had originally, the expected bonus that we get from it, the expected damage that we should see, the true damage that we see, and what the true bonus is. I then use this to deduce whether or not this is legitimately impacting overpower or it's not. You'll also notice that there are some other things in this list, like probably, and read these notes and not applicable. These were just when I had to set up a new basis for when I was testing. The probably is because it probably works. It's just literally physically impossible to test in game because of the way that animations work. Or the notes are going to specifically relate to very particular interactions that happen in this game when you use them for overpowering. And those will have links to like weird mechanisms in the game that you can actually watch yourself in like 25% speed so you can see what I'm talking about. And I try to write down the things that are relevant for you to know on top of literally just testing whether or not that individual aspect actually has an impact on the damage or not. And you could go ahead and take this list, copy and paste it into your own. I'll have it shared so anybody can take a look at it. You can rerun the tests if you want to as well. I have a base character. I'm using the simplest of means of testing. So literally the bare minimum level one site that you get in this game to minimize the actual skill damage variable here. And then I would put on individual things to test their effect on the game. You'll see here that you might go like, oh, this has an aspect and blood skill damage. Well, if you go check the sheet turns out blood skill damage actually doesn't scale overpower so this right here is a piece of gear that's looking to test just that aspect or you might see that i throw on this ring that also has critical strike damage well if you check the sheet critical strike damage and any additive damage bonuses that aren't overpower do not work with overpower so this was only looking to test very specifically the malignant heart that's socketed into the ring the list goes on and on this was to very specifically test inner calm and again uh additive damage bonuses don't work and if you check the sheet intelligence doesn't increase overpower. So that's how we're able to isolate individual variables. And then went even further for isolating individual variables within the Book of the Dead, making sure to never have this sacrifice bonus on, etc. And then when we come into the Paragon tree in the skill tree, the individual things that we were testing at any given moment would never interfere with one another. So if we were testing the sacrifice bonuses, Memento Mori would be important to have here to also test that particular interaction with it. But when we were not using that, obviously we would remove those points. You'll see that the things that we have points in right now uh, do not interact with each other, right? So this just gives us attack speed. We have none of the blood passives picked at this point. We are not using imperfectly balanced for any of those testing, except specifically for imperfectly balanced. Just to give you an idea of like the rigor of the testing. No skill should ever interact with any other skill and give a false positive here. The same thing would happen in the Paragon board. Now, when I needed to build out to Blood Begets Blood, I obviously picked up a few more nodes of Willpower. Willpower is going to increase your overpower damage. So that is what I was specifically referring to here with these not applicables. New base test would be a new base test based off either picking up additional maximum life or additional willpower or overpower nodes for very specifically needing to go test the dominate glyph bonus, which you need to put into a different glyph socket because you need to be able to reach a minimum requirement to see that testing, etc. And I would use this character as it stands right here. So with absolutely nothing on with our current Paragon tree, making sure to go and see what our base overpower damage was. So let me just go ahead and get an example of a monster. 
Here's a bird. And of course we crit on that one. Why wouldn't we? Boop. 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 And then making sure to always have maximum life and never having any fortify because that would obviously change what our overpower damage numbers look like and getting 6294. And then we would take that and use that as our basis. And the reason why that number could be so strongly used as a basis, because one, if we just go look at what my base skill damage is, and let me just go ahead and pick one up. Base skill damage, there is uh, about seven, nine, nine, 10, 11, getting very small average numbers that don't actually impact how much overpower damage we're going to be showing on the next route. And then when we do this again, 6295. So literally off by a single damage number there, just to give an idea of how close the overpower numbers are and how easy it is to actually test to make sure that nothing is impacting them directly that you don't intend to be impacting them. And then I want to talk about both Hungry Blood and gore quills because they're doing something very very interesting i have a ton of clips here from when i was testing gore quills uh one of the clips just proves the fact that the gore quills lances that hit targets and on top of that hungry blood does this as well they just have a three percent chance to overpower when they deal damage to a target even if you're not casting the skill again so you'll notice that you'll overpower randomly across all of your targets whenever a gore quill or hungry bloods lance hits another target and deals damage and this is outside of whether or not your skill overpowered so you can just get more free overpowers from these triggered events which you might go like well of course you can all damage has a chance to overpower but it's very interesting that these triggered events that are doing free casts of skills don't typically follow the other rules of how you cast these skills, right? Like they actually do reduce damage, but it doesn't reduce the overpower damage, but they can just trigger overpower events. So already by using them, you are literally just gaining more overpower triggers than just the 3% of your random casts would typically account for. So that's very cool to understand. But let me show you how overpower typically works in the game. So for Bloodlance overpower in particular, you count up to six and then on the seventh cast of overpower, so which would be the first cast of the next timer, you get your overpower damage. So I just want to show you that very quickly. If I'm at five and I go and I Bloodlance a random target, like this bear, I do not overpower. And then on the sixth cast, I overpower on both targets, the one that I hit, as well as the bear that was already lanced. And you'll notice again that my timer is now at one. So if I do one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth cast, I overpower on both of them, you're seeing the pattern. It's very simple to follow this pattern. And it is, it counts up to six. And then on the seventh, you get the overpower and the number rotates over to one because you're now on the first cast of the next set of six. Now, when I throw on Hungry Blood, I'm going to get up to five. So I'm going to get up to five casts of Bloodlands. I'm going to hit that target with that fifth one and then watch what happens when the lance that comes out of it hits another target. So I'm at four right now, I have two targets, so I lance this one for five, and then I lance it again. Interesting. It might have gone a little bit too quickly, like rewatch and slow down the time. But here, when I get up to the fifth cast, it counts to six, and then the spear that flies from this target to this target counts me over so as if I've cast my seven lance, it overpowers, but you'll notice that it leaves my counter at zero. The interaction here, which is unique to this, is that hitting a target on my fifth lance and then hitting it, that same target on my sixth lance causes Hungry Blood to trigger, which says if the target is already lanced, shoot a lance at another target. But I should still only be at six. I should need to cast one more time to overpower. But the lance that triggers from this ability is causing the overpower timer to tick up to the seventh cast, which is when you get the bonus damage, and leaving us at zero because we didn't cast another lance. It is overpowering one lance sooner than it should. You might go, well, of course, every time the blood lance hits another target, it should count up. I want to run the test one more time where I show you the first and the second cast on multiple targets here. So we have multiple targets. I do one cast. I do two cast. It just hit here, but it didn't tick up my timer. I do three casts. Four cast, it does it again. Five, it does it again. And then the one that triggered off of this one hitting the next target 
causes the Blood Lance counter to count up in overpower when it shouldn't have. Now, the reason why this is so important is because this also happens with Gore Quills. So Gore Quill here, let me just get rid of these extra ones. I'm going to create a Blood Orb. So I have a Blood Orb here, and now I'm going to cast Blood Lance, which will be my sixth cast into this target. And then the Blood Orbs that fire lances do the same thing as Hungry Blood. The orbs, for whatever reason, are counting our total timer up by one. Even though these aren't new casts of the same skill, they are triggered events of the orbs generating lance missiles. And then that is causing us to overpower one cast earlier than you would expect it to, which is awesome. And then leaving us back down at zero. So we, again, are gaining an additional free overpower cast rotation by one. We are just literally more effective by wearing the aspect. Now, here is the problem. And there's no way for me to make it happen in the game. And I've tested this extensively. Using both of them together doesn't continue to increment this uh, cascade any further. So if I just very quickly use this Blood Lance, and we're going to go... If the Hungry Blood would count us up by one, and the Blood Orb would count us up by one, theoretically, we should be able to do a cascade from cast four into five. So if we make the Blood Orb here, and then we run very far away, we should have enough time to use these cascading blood orbs to get this effect. So I'm going to go four into five. And we only netted one increment higher, and that was from the blood orbs when we were casting on five, bringing us up to six. But it doesn't net us all the way up to a double increase in effectiveness, or at least I can't find a way to make it work where the blood orb hits the target after the lance that is created by hungry blood would then hit the next target to increment in that way. If you can find a way to do this like realistically and often, you could use the two aspects together. Right now, I still don't think that there's a reason to use them together, but I want to call out those two very specific things as they pertain to blood lance in particular, because this will help to understand why blood lance has been, in my opinion, overperforming based off of the changes that they have made. And now that we can also get Untimely Death to actually be a true multiplier for the build, we're obviously going to have to find a way of fitting another aspect into this build that we previously couldn't. So that's going to be an interesting little Jenga puzzle to try to figure out. But I just want to get this information out to everybody. I'm going to be posting this on Reddit. I'll be posting in the Sanctuary Discord. Feel free to share it with as many people as you would like. I'm not trying to hoard this information. I'm not trying to keep it a secret. I want everybody to be as informed as possible while playing these characters so you can make the best dang builds that you possibly can. If you enjoyed this or if this was helpful or if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. This is the type of content that I really like to make and I'm only able to sit down and test these things for like five or six hours on stream non-stop because people are able to like support in that small way. So again, if you haven't clicked the button, click the ding dang button. I'd love to have you here, but I really hope that this helps at the very least everybody to just be able to like theory craft and just build better characters so that we all know what we're doing and what buttons we're clicking and whether or not they even function. But again, I really hope that this helped you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.